Well, church, welcome to a very special and very intimate uh, Christmas Eve worship service. And it's intimate because you're in your homes and, and you have the opportunity tonight to really make this a very special time. We're going to be doing the Lord's Supper. And, and so if I'm gonna pause for a moment and I'd like for you to go and to get whatever you might need for a bread and the cup and juice that you might be able to partake in the Lord's Supper this evening. And so I want you to go and get that and get it ready before we proceed. So I wanna give you a chance to do that right now. Well, I hope you have everything that you need for the Lord's Supper tonight. What we're gonna do is, is something very simple and, and I hope just kind of an elegant way to experience Christmas tonight. Uh, I just wanna read the, the Christmas story for you. Um, so uh, get in a comfortable place and, and hopefully you're around a tree and, and I'm gonna read the Christmas story and then together we're going to have the Lord's Supper. Uh, we know that uh, Mary and Joseph were in that place uh, in Bethlehem, that stable, and, and try to put yourself right there with them. I've been preaching on viewing the world from inside the stable with Jesus Christ. And I hope that, that the sermons on Sunday morning have really been meaningful to you. But right now you have the chance to really enter into that place. And, uh, and so the Christmas story is, is just so beautiful. And I love the way that Luke writes it. All right. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there, were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone all around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, fear not, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you and he is Christ, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all men. When the angels had left them and gone back into heaven, the, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. What a beautiful story. It never gets old, does it? It's so elegant and, and it just reminds us of the Messiah coming into our world to save us, to save you, to save me, and generations and generations have come to this passage every Christmas and it's given them hope for our world. It's brought peace into their lives. It's transformative. 
We're so grateful that God gives it to us. And now as we begin to transition into the Lord's Supper, um, I want you to take your cup and your bread that you've prepared. Now, if you're watching this, uh, you're watching it for one of two reasons. Either we had inclement weather and we had to cancel our Christmas on Maine worship service, uh, but you also might be watching it because you couldn't come to our Christmas at, on Maine. And so you're at home and you're needing and wanting as, uh, as we all do to experience the Lord's Supper tonight and the Christmas story. And, and this is a very special time. Um, the Bible tells us not to take the Lord's Supper uh, in an unworthy manner. And so what I'd like to do is just as I get everything ready here, uh, I just want you to prepare your hearts, to prepare your minds to receive the Lord's Supper tonight. Christmas, of course, moves into Easter. And we know that uh, the night that our Lord Jesus was um, arrested and the next day that he was crucified, he had the Last Supper with his apostles. And the Bible says that when he was there with them, it says, for what I receive from the Lord, I pass on to you. And this is the Apostle Paul talking about what he had received about the Lord's Supper. And then he, he talked about what Jesus did on that night and quoted the Lord in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And it says this, the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was crucified and betrayed, he took the bread. And so here's the bread and it says that he broke it. And as he broke it, he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And you can picture Jesus tearing the bread symbolizing the brokenness of his body that he was about to have to endure. And he took that bread as we're doing right now. And so take your bread and get yourself a piece of it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you eat with me? Would you pray with me? A prayer of thanksgiving for the bread. Heavenly Father, your Bible teaches us that by your stripes we are healed. And we are amazed at what your body went through the night that you were crucified, the night you were betrayed and the day that you were crucified, God. We can't imagine it, but we are so grateful for it. Thank you for putting yourself through so much to give us life and to give us salvation and to give us hope. Lord, we love you for it. We're thankful for what you endured on our behalf. Um, thank you for what you've given to our whole world. Be with us tonight, God, on this Christmas Eve as we celebrate not just your birth, but your life and your death and your resurrection and God, the fact that you're returning again. The whole story we celebrate tonight. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Take your cup with me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Would you drink with me? Now let's pray a prayer of thanksgiving over the cup. Father in heaven, we come to you once again and we are very, very grateful that you shed your blood for us. Lord, the Bible says that apart from the, uh, the giving of blood, then there is no cleansing of sin. And Father, we are reminded of the great sacrifices, thousands of them over and over and all the animals that the Jews sacrificed and shed their blood so that they would, their sins would be forgiven. And Father, you were the last sacrifice. Your blood was shed so that we could have life. And we are incredibly grateful, Father. Thank you for all you have done for us. Lord, we, we drink the cup tonight. We look at it and its redness and its, uh, uh, the form that it's in. And it does remind us of your blood. And we take it, Father, uh, to be a part of us so that we would share in your crucifixion. We pick up our cross as well and we follow you. So be with us, Father, on this great night 
And may we draw near to you so that we remember what Christmas is all about, so that we remember what this whole life is all about. Be with us tonight, God. We love you so much, Lord, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Now, in the very end, it says, uh, after they had the supper, that all of the apostles went with Jesus, and it says that they, that they went out singing. And so typically during our uh, uh, Christmas Eve service, as we always do, we light candles and we leave singing, don't we? And, and what is it we sing? Silent Night. And so as we bring this to an end, um, I'm not a very good singer. And so uh, what I'm gonna do is just prompt you. Uh, I'm gonna say one last prayer about Christmas Eve. And, and when I say amen, and I'm tell you, and I'm going to tell you that I love you very much. And when and and when this moment finishes, would you in your house sing Silent Night? Sing it with the people you love. Sing it in the intimacy uh, uh, of the night. And 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 this will be a, a great great memory for you and your family as y'all had the Lord's Supper together, as you heard the Christmas story and you sang Silent Night together. And I know some of you may be a little bit like me and you think, goodness, I, I can't sing very well either, but, but you're around people that you love. And, and so y'all sing it well, sing it together. Silent Night, Holy Night. So let me pray for us as we, as we end. Heavenly Father, thank you for a great night. Thank you for the Christmas story and how Luke portrays it so dramatically, so vividly. Lord, as we think of the angels coming and meeting the shepherds in that moment and that they were terrified and the angels say, fear not. Lord, there is a lot in this world for us to fear as well. And we ask you that you will send angels into our lives and uh, your Holy Spirit into our lives to help us as well to fear not. Lord, that we may go into our world and, and live for you very well. Thank you for this night, God. And we ask you that you will be with us and worship you all through tomorrow. And Lord, that you will lead us into a new year, 2021, and that 2021 will be a great year. Be with us, Father, and may we be faithful unto you. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Amen. Church, I love you very much tonight. Have a very Merry Christmas.